Howdy folks, this is Dr. Matt Grishop, director of the Grimm Family Center for Organic Production and Research at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and you're joining us for Organic Chat. Welcome to Organic Chat. So today um, we're going to be chatting with Rhea Chabra. She is an undergraduate research assistant who's been working with the center for two years now? A year and a half, two years. A year and a half, yeah. two years, that's right, great. Uh, so welcome to the show. Thank Rhea, you for it's having great to me. have you. Um, to start with, why don't you just uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what kind of agricultural background you come from? Yeah, for sure. So I grew up in Sacramento, California. Um, my mom's family has owned pear and apple orchards in the Delta by Cortland um, since the gold rush, a little before maybe. Wow. Yeah. So uh, seventh generation on my mom's side, um, but my dad grew up in India. So he and my mom met at Davis when he came for college. So oh, wow. no ag background on my dad's side at all. Huh. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting kind of having that comparison. Yeah. Uh, but growing up, I worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. I worked in the packing house when I was like old enough to have a work okay. permit. Um, my grandparents lived on the ranch, on our main ranch. So it was really interesting choosing to go into agriculture school because my whole life I was like I'm never gonna go into agriculture yeah. I'm not gonna end up like my mom <laughs> working those 12-hour shifts every day I'm not gonna have packing season um but here I am unfortunately yep. no very fortunately it just when you think you're out it pulls you back in it pulls you back in it every pulls time you back in. yeah so is your dad an active part of the farm uh now? no actually uh, my dad works in IT. He worked oh, for okay. Intel for a while. Now he works in insurance. He works for Blue Shield. So. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. It, very different different lifestyles for sure. Mm -hmm. um, cool to experience both. Yeah. Um, my sister went into consulting, so marketing right. for a consulting firm. So she took his route. I took my mom's route and in going into agriculture. Oh, that's great. So um, did you all have, do you have any organic production on the uh -huh. orchards? About... 30% organic. Mm -hmm. That's a rough estimate. I don't know what it is this year, um, but it changes year to year. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, pears or apples, both. or is it a pretty much a mix of Yeah, a mix of across? both. Um, I think we have like 11 varieties of pears, 23 varieties of wow. apples around. That's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. Um, the acreage is really fun. It's 1,111, 1111. Oh, okay. Um, so definitely a huge mix of both. Yeah. Um, yeah. So on that apples, I'm an apple geek. So you knew this about me. I I'll think, try to catch up. No, it's okay. Uh, do you have high density production as well as freestanding production? So trellised apples? Uh, no, or actually. It's all freestanding. It's all freestanding. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm gonna ask you more questions about the orchard. Yeah, of course. Um, how about marketing? So with your organic products. Uh, did you, what kind of marketing does the orchard rely on? What, or what is it historically relied on? Um, I'm actually not quite sure about that. We uh, usually contract under larger companies like Domani okay. and stuff um, to package it. Uh, we also have a cidery though. Oh, cool. Cider does mainly pear ciders actually, oh. which are a little harder to make than apple ciders I've yeah. heard. Um, they are. So that was started by my aunt Sarah. Mm -hmm. So it's owned under the company, marketed by us, but Everything else uh, is outsourced for sure. And that's all, is that all um, fresh cider or do you, do you all do hard cider as well? Hard cider. Hard Wait, cider. There, oh, so I pears. don't think there's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, pears are interesting. You don't get as much juice out of them as you do an apple. No, yeah. And they have some interesting mixes too. Um, they tend to be sweet too. Yeah. A little too sweet for me, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but good cider, really yeah. good cider from everyone I've heard. I'm not much of a cider person. That's really cool. So you, did you do any local marketing at all? I mean, any kind of like farmer's markets or um, local groceries or anything like that? Well, I mean, to Rayleigh, Safeway, Vaughn, okay. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, not much in the farmer's markets, but my mom worked for the Sacramento County Farm Bureau for a while. She oh, was wow. president for a couple of years. First female president. My goodness. So um, I, I got to like work Farm Bureau booths and stuff as a kid. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, so you've really come from a very strong agricultural background. Seven generations, that's yeah. nothing to sneeze at. I forget it sometimes, and then first day of college, they're like, who plays Guess the Crop with their parents in the car on the way to school? I'm like, oh, I do, <laughs> other people do, no way. <laughs> that's, I play that with my kids. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, Guess the Crop's a good I'm finally one. catching up to my mom. Yeah. I have a batting chance now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, hey. 
crop science minor, right? Yeah, uh, two minors, sustainable yeah. agriculture and crop science, yeah. Oh, wow, I, oh, that's right, you're in the sustainable minor. And then you're an agricultural communications major, correct? Uh, ag science major. Under oh, ag science, sorry. Ag communication education college. Oh, so okay, all right. Department, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting major. I really kind of I've interacted with some graduates of it, as well as current students like yourself, but the ability to kind of draw from a lot of different disciplines looks like yeah. it would just be really appealing. I was looking at other majors curriculum sheets of like you progress in all your classes, mm -hmm. you know, you have a page of your major classes. I have four major classes I have to take. Everything else is elective basically. Right. I have plant science, you know, engineering, all the things. So what have been some of your favorite classes that you've taken? Um, I mean, it sounds a little nerdy, but I took an organic compliance class yeah. um, with Dr. Zubile last year. Oh, cool. Really cool. We got to fill out the whole uh, CCOF paperwork uh, for an imaginary farm, yeah, of yeah. course. But um, that was fun. I got to call my mom and go, I guess what I'm not getting paid to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so what have been, so you've worked um, primarily with Shane, who is a, a previous guest on, on the podcast, correct? Yes. And so you've been working, he's doing a broccoli irrigation nitrogen project. Have you worked on other projects as well while you've been yeah, with us? Yeah, I mean, or I've... What are some of the other projects? I've dabbled in everyone's, I feel like. I mm -hmm. like to stick my foot in what they're doing. I get a little too curious. Um, but Megan, who's working on the Regen mm -hmm. project, yeah. I before she was a grad student, I did a little bit of the preliminary research for the SIA method. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've worked with Shane, um, with, do you, were you here with Sarah and Miguel? They were yeah, undergraduate um, students working on the yeah. Ferrari project. Yeah, yeah. Miguel. Um, before Xander took it over, mm -hmm. I helped them out a lot. That was really cool to see. Um, helped Allison with the Nature Safe project. So right. definitely dabbled in everyone's stuff a little too much. That's um, great. But it's been fun. So what are your... Um, what are the things that you're finding most interesting in what you're doing right now? What are the, the questions or the concepts that you're most excited to learn and explore? Um, definitely in the realm of soil fertility, for mm -hmm. sure. I've, I've been grading for um, Dr. DeCock's old class, Soil Health and Fertility, for a year and a half, two years now, oh, wow. around the amount of time I've been working for the center. So I get to refresh on every nutrient cycle every quarter, which is oh, wow. really fun for me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, look at the fertility projects and just kind of evaluate, like, I don't know, a CCA <laughs> kind of training experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been finding the nutrient dynamics really interesting in soil. Sorry, are you hoping to get your CCA? Hopefully. Um, I don't know if I can pay for that on my own, but yeah. one day maybe, yeah. I. I've taken like practice exams and stuff for Good. it and that's always fun. Excellent. Yeah, it's a great program. So how about just in terms of organic? So it's you grew up with some organic agriculture and you've been exposed to some more organic agriculture, you know, here at Cal Poly. Uh, what does it mean to you? I mean, what's your, so you don't need to give me a canned definition of organic agriculture, but for you, I mean, what, what does it mean? Um, growing up, Mm -hmm. Organics really just meant you have to run them at the start of the day because conventional is going to go on the line right after. You can't have it swapped. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So yeah, your packing line, right? Yeah. Because right, you've got to you, you've got to clean everything out if you run any conventional fruit, and you don't want to do that twice. Mm -hmm. So organics usually meant six a.m. for me okay. growing up. All right, six a.m. Um, <laughs> but uh, now it means so much more. I mean, especially if you're like going into the regenerative aspect of organics, mm -hmm. it's so much bigger than you know just CCOF compliance. Science. It's learning the message behind organics in college has really been interesting mm -hmm. for me. Um, it's a little bit of a cult, but it's really cool. I <laughs> love it. I love the people who love organics. It definitely, it, yeah, maybe tight knit community. Yeah, Amanda cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so what are you hoping to do next? I mean, what's what's next for you? Oh my God, scary question, right? I know, Every time someone asks that, I go, well, that's what I'm, old people ask I'm college in my students. fourth year of college, so I'm in the panic mm -hmm. scary phase, um, and everyone gets that. But hopefully graduate school, mm -hmm. I love research. I, I like the working to solve a question aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like experimental design. I like thinking through methodology. Um, so hopefully a master's project mm -hmm. um, down the line, but you know, I'm, I'm also 21. I'm, I, I could take a year. <laughs> <laughs> you could, and, and some would say you should. Yeah. Um, 
But if, if you do go on to grad school, you're planning on continuing in soil, soil fertility, soil science? Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, what's been the biggest thing you've learned while working uh, with the center and with the grad students? Oh, fun question. Or you can give me three. Okay, if I can give too, you a top three. Um, flexibility, probably number one. I was just talking about that with people in the lab of mm -hmm. you're gonna get a call of, hey, we're irrigating right now drive an hour to come see us. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're racing harvest crews is always fun yeah. too. We're cutting your crop right now, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, had a lot of those experiences in the last mm -hmm. year, for sure. Um, but that's fun. I, I really like that. I think to go hand in hand with that, my second one would be dedication. Mm -hmm. um, you got to care about what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and in organics, you got to care about why you care about what you do. That's super important. Um, you know, going into, I don't know, college in general, I thought I'd really take the environmental path of it. Um, and organic agriculture is that perfect, like, intersection of, like, I get yeah. why we care about this. I get how we can, you know, make that change. Yeah. Um, I don't know my third one. That's all right. You don't have to have three. But I, I'm actually really curious to hear you expand on, I, I've really enjoyed hearing you say it's not just... Um, how you do something, it's, it's why you do it. Mm -hmm. so can you expand on that? Yeah. Like, how does that connect? It's, um, that's an interesting question, actually. I, it's more of like the, the, you're applying organic fertilizers, right? And mm -hmm. you know you need to apply maybe a little bit more liquid to hit the same like mm -hmm. nitrogen applications that you would with a conventional fertilizer. It's gonna cost you more money. Mm -hmm. Is it worth the premium of the product? or is it worth the benefit you're giving to the ground, to your crop kind mm -hmm. of thing? Um, and that's like very much looking outside of your own like cropping system mm -hmm. or your job in yeah. general and seeing like the impacts of your job. Um, I don't know if that completely answers the question. No, I think that really did a nice job expanding on it. I, I think it's, and, and that's something I, that, that's similar to thoughts I have um, often about our food system in general. I've, as I've gotten older, I've become increasingly convinced that if we actually want to move towards or continue to move towards more sustainable food systems, um, we've got to be able to look at a crop and look beyond the crop and, and at every level of the food system. I mean, that's the challenging part. So I think, you know, for organic practitioners, um, especially, you know, the ones of that, that tight knit community you mentioned earlier, <laughs> um, they're already there, right? They're thinking, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I get a premium and that's important because my costs are higher. But on the other hand, I'm doing this for a whole host of reasons. Like my kids can play in the field. I don't have to worry about reentry intervals. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm building my soil. I'm, I'm contributing more. But I think that sort of ethos is what we're going to need um, beyond the cash register. Because um, if all we see is food in a field, and we it's really easy to put an economic value on that and that really becomes the the end all be all of that system and it's really easy to forget that there are the the biology and the human culture and everything that's underlying that food and those things really need to be respected as well yeah um, if we want to keep moving in a sustainable direction because that's what i believe but I, I heard an echo of that in, in what you said. I think that's that's really true. It is, it's um, knowing why you're doing something is as important as how it, under the sort of organic umbrella. Um, maybe too, because it, it, it's so challenging and it challenges you in different ways all the time. And um, it's, it might be easy to give up if you didn't know why. Yeah, that was very well said. It definitely like comes back to the passion of it. Mm -hmm. um, everyone I've met here, that'll be my third thing. Yeah. Passion. Passion. All everyone right. I've met See, loves what they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no matter how long the day is, it is rewarding. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, obviously. That's why I feel like that's why people get into agriculture is you're like, you have the ego boost of what I'm doing is important. Mm -hmm. First and last job humans will ever have kind of ego boost. Yep. Um, and yeah, to throw out the holistic word, it's not just a crop in a field, it's not just food in a grocery store, it's an environment you're managing and taking from, mm -hmm. uh, and that comes with responsibilities for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You see here, I had a question for you that built off that. 
um, question I have for you, um, Ria, is what's the most challenging thing that you've been faced with and, and had to under overcome in mm -hmm. your in your time working with Shane and others in the research projects? Um, beyond like physically demanding. Okay. Because I can lift 50 pounds. That checks off a lot of job boxes for me, <laughs> but I, I struggle yeah. during it. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, exactly what we've been, we've been saying this whole time of there's so many factors you have to wrap your head around, mm -hmm. especially in Shane's project. He's doing, you know, the fertility management. We're building our irrigation system. We're, right. you know, thinking about both of those factors. We're doing infield incubations. We're, you know, testing the soil in lab. We're doing extraction. It's all of these factors that all come together for one greater research question. And it's kind of dialing it all in to like, what are we thinking about right now? Mm -hmm. um, that's been the most challenging part for me, definitely. Okay. To, I, I ask all the little questions, you know what I mean? And it's the coming together that, that's been tough. So sort of creating the boundaries around what you're trying to ask and what you're hoping to get out yeah. of it and then how you're going to do it. Yeah, it's it's easy to get carried away in, oh, in, yeah. in the everything of it all, for sure. It is. Yeah, I mean, finding those, finding those sort of natural boundaries where you can understand something is is a is a challenging proposal yeah well thank you so much Ria it's been great chatting with you thank you you know so much for all the work you've put in for the center and um, hopefully there'll be a lot more to come yeah thank you for having me oh, I love you working bet. for the center Thanks for listening to Organic Chat. Um, this podcast is recorded on the Cal Poly campus. Um, production provided by our production engineer, Mary Nascimento. 